All right. Uh, so I guess now you understand what the plan was. Absolutely. At Colts Law, we talk Indianapolis Colts football. We're going to stick to what we know, fundamentals and technique, 1% better every day. What's going on, Colts Nation? Glad to see all of you in here. True it. Brandon Wood. What's up, Fuzzy Whistler? <laughs> um, and I see Alpha Wolf in here as well. Thanks so much. Well, I'm Lawrence Owen, and with me as usual is Loyalist, and this is the Colts Law Show, and today we're going to be talking about Michael Strawn, the seventh round pick, right, for the Indianapolis Colts, who has been, quite frankly, making waves um, over the past couple weeks. And I am going to get to that quickly, shortly, but um, I just wanted to bring up that uh, today I was, you know, just like a normal everyday person, like I generally do my whole life, you know, uh, watching and, and gaining information from other people. And I was watching the JMV show, uh, The Ride, right, with JMV today. And he was discussing a lot of stuff about the Colts, uh, the starting quarterbacks, the running backs, the defense. And uh, he, he brought up that, you know, he wasn't sure that the defense would be any better this year. And... Uh, that, that, that he thought that they might actually take a step back because of the losses that we have, and we have a lot of uncertainty and pass rush and stuff like that. And uh, so I, I was like, you know what? It's odd because I was thinking the exact same thing before training camp started. So uh, I called in, and this is pretty much what happened. Lawrence is next at 239-1070. Lawrence, hello. Hey, Jan V. How's it going? Lawrence, I'm great. Go ahead. All right, so, well, I could have argued with you a little bit about what's going on with quarterbacks. The way I called in about the defense, I kind of agree with you about the whole um, <coughs> beginning. Right after the draft, I was like, you know, the defense might take a step back. They were 10th overall last year, yeah. but, you know, they I, I could see them dropping back to 10. Now, I've been to, like, I don't know, 10, 11 practices so far this training camp, and I, I've seen – I've seen these flashes. I've seen Torre. I've seen Banadu. You know, I, I, I've seen what Quiddy Pay is out there doing. But it's against an offensive line that, that's kind of questionable, especially at the tackle yeah. position. You know? It's tough to get a real good view of it. There's no question. Absolutely. And I think that's what's going to happen this weekend with uh, the, the Vikings, man. Because I'm pretty sure that we're going to be seeing one, uh, first team versus first team. So we'll get a better evaluation. Of, of what these guys can do against starting quality, you know, tackles and stuff. So I think at that point is when you start to really kind of come in and, and make a decision or, or you know, eval evaluate that pass rush and be like, is it going to be better than, you know, what we had with Houston and all yeah. three? Yeah. Or, and, and I mentioned you know, this too, Lawrence. I, I thought you'd had to, you had to have significant improvement over what you had a year ago that you don't have this year. So consider the production you're taking away with those guys being gone. And we still sat around here and thought that that production had to be better regardless. So it is a lot to think about and to ask for, especially quarterback pressure up front. And you also have to have these guys stay healthy. And Ture has not been able to do that. No, uh, that's that's one of the big things about Ture, right? He's just not been consistently out there on the field. I mean, when he's on the field, he looks yeah. good. Like in that preseason game, he yeah. didn't get any sacks, but man, he had a lot of pressures. He was, he was so, he was making that left tackle so uncomfortable. He, he forced him to do like three or four all start, uh, false starts during the game, you know? So uh, if he could stay healthy, then, you know, the sky's the limit for the kid. But, man, he's really got to stay healthy and, and be consistent in that pass. And the, the Colts have two of those examples, one on the offense, one on the defense. Kamoko Toure defensively and Paris Campbell offensively. I mean, flashes and signs and, oh, wow, if they can. And you just got to be able to stay out there. And neither have been able to so far in their career. So that's the hope. Lawrence, anything else? Uh. No, I just appreciate you having me on here, and uh, thanks for letting me get my, my opinion out there. I Lawrence, it. you know it. Thank you for the call. Very nice of you, Lawrence. All right, so that was it. You know, uh, I don't call in the places very often, but they were talking about something that I had a strong opinion about, so I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to give a call this time, right? Uh, um, JMV's usually pretty good at uh, – 
uh, you know, not jumping down someone's throat. I kind of generally like his his takes. Um, not quite like some of the other radio broadcasters that we know and and love. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to name names. Um, congratulations, by the way, to Kevin Bowen for getting his new gig. That's pretty pretty freaking awesome. But that that is that. And also, I need to warn you all, uh, I haven't been feeling very well for the last two hours. So if I have to jump out of here uh, with, without any warning, uh, my boy Loyalist is going to take over until I get back. So, uh, yeah, I, it's one of those days. But, you know, the work continues. I'm out here trying to give you guys some content. Appreciate each and every one of you. 22 of you in the view right now. Don't forget to smash that like button. Hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed, tag that notification bell so that you are notified next time I go live. Michael Strawn. We're going to get to him in just a moment. Literally in just like, I don't know, what, a minute and a half? But first... I want to let you guys know, you can check us out on Newsbreak as well. You know, it's an easy app, someplace that you can check us out with. If you use the link in the description of this video right down here, uh, you'll be supporting us financially, believe it or not, for downloading a free app and following me. How awesome is that? This video is sponsored by Newsbreak. Newsbreak is an app used over 1.5 billion times a month by people just like you to get local news via articles or videos by those who are focused on that specific area. People like myself, just use the link in the description of this video to download it. Then search a city, state, or someone specific, like myself, Colts Law. Then make sure to follow them so you'll get all the news fresh as it comes out. So, Mr. J. Five six seven in the in the stream. Thanks for being here. And he's sitting there. He says uh, Strawn certainly has a lot of big names talking about him. Well, let's go ahead and get into that, right? Let's get into to, to, to that conversation. And I'm going to record it. So give me a moment because this is what's going to go on news break. So I'm Lawrence Owen, and that's Colts loyalist, and we're talking about Mike Strawn, right? Not Strachan, not Strahan, not whatever it is that. Um, uh, uh, our, our, our our former all pro punter was calling him. I I I don't know. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. It's strong. It's like straw, but with an N at the end of it. So uh, easy easy to pronounce once you understand how to pronounce it. Yeah, get past the visual of it, and then it's easy to pronounce. Right. Or we just call, or we we can just call him Mega Strong. You know, it makes it better for you. Absolutely, Megastron, right? Mega, that was brought up on this channel what last week, and it's it's caught on. It's caught on like crazy, and I love it. I love the Megastron uh, uh, name that's been put out there. But he has been talked about by a lot of people ever since. The, I mean, locally, yes, you've heard names about Str uh, Michael Strawn, right? You heard that you know he has flashes. He's a big body. He could go up and get the catch. But there was issues, right? Beginning of camp, he was dropping a lot of balls. He was having problems getting open at times consistently, right? He he was, but he was a seventh round pick out of the D two school, right? I mean, come on, he goes from a D two school to the NFL with guys like, you know, uh, Xavier Rhodes covering him, right? I mean, it's gonna take him a moment uh, to, <laughs> to to get to it. And on top of that, he's not just got his his boys uh, out there like Michael Pittman Jr. and T. Y. Hilton. And because he he said that T. Y. Hilton, when I interviewed him, when I interviewed Mike Strawn right after he was drafted, and uh, they were out there talking, and he said that you know T. Y. He's you know been helping him out a lot, even though they're completely different style of receivers. T. Y. Still giving him advice, uh, but not just the the wide receivers, not just the coaches. But the guy covering him, the guy covering Xavier Rhodes is out there after every rep that he covers him, they're out there talking. And Rhodes is like, dude, this is what you could do to make this easier on yourself. You know, you got size. You could box people out. Act like this is basketball, you know, stuff like that. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. And that is awesome 
that a really good defender who knows how to defend big-bodied wide receivers, mind you, because he's covered Julio Jones and guys like that uh, throughout his career and covered them well, like have been locked down on them. And he's out there saying, this is how, this is what you do to break away from me, right? And yeah. it really showed up on Sunday. And that's why the big names are talking about him. Because uh, if you look at the, um, you, the the picture that I got right here, the thumbnail for this video, you know, it's where he's skying over the dude, you know, when he catches the ball uh, with a beautiful pass from Jacob Eason. And, yeah, he's he's got some physical talent out there. And there's no denying that physical talent. Um, yeah. What have I mean, you seen? What have you seen in practice? Uh, I'm the change. I mean, it is you know you hear the you you see him and he come out in the first week like you said you you seen the jitters you seen him just not feeling comfortable and stuff. But I mean, day in day out, he is by far the most consistent flash guy. He's the guy that continuously just keeps taking and and stacking days on days like we keep talking about. We'd like to see from the quarterback position or all positions for that matter. I mean, Strawn has just really looked like it's not too big for him. He looks like he's taking all the tutelage that he's getting from, like you said, so many different sources, not to mention the coaching staff. You know what I mean? And the time that he's put in, you can see that that he is ready to take this. He doesn't care what school he went to. He doesn't care about where he was drafted. All he cares about now is he's in there, He's getting an opportunity, and he's making the most of it. And like you said, the fact that we got him in the seventh round, I mean, I can see the whole league in a couple of years going, how did we let this kid slip by? I mean, you know, because seriously, just just the measurable 6'5", 225, I mean, that right there is just hard to turn away from, let alone whatever the reasons were that, I mean, is it seriously just because he, he went to a, a Division two school that, that he didn't get picked up, or was there something else, you know? Uh, you, you know, the history of his dad, you know, being a professional player and giving him guidelines as far as what to expect in the league and all the connection that he's had with Michael Irving and, and just, you know, because he says that Michael played with his dad and, and he's gotten a lot of guidance there. I mean, these are legit names that he's getting, you know, this advice from before he even came to the, the Colts complex. And now, like I said, it, the amount of people that he has, and you talk about the fact that he's being mentioned. I mean, he's not just being mentioned by low. I mean, there's Reggie Wayne, there's the Pat McAfee show. You see it on Jeff Saturday on ESPN. I mean, you know, it's awesome to sit there and see this kid getting this much hype and then to know that this is just, he's just scratching the surface. I mean, every day you see a noticeable improvement on his ability to, like you said, body up a guy and, and get position before the pass is even released. And the fact that he came in with a decent understanding of the route tree and to know that the coaches, the coaches, I felt like they were like, okay, this is going to be a big project. But I think even they were surprised to some extent with how much knowledge he had of the game. And like I said, this young man has just taken everything that he's been taught up to this point and he's put everything into every play. And I love the effort and just the, the tenacity and, and, and the fact that he's not sitting there and acting like, okay, my job's done. I'm, I'm, you know, now people are talking about me. No, you can see the hunger. You can see the desire. I mean, quite honestly, I think this kid not only will make the roster, but I think he'll have some opportunities throughout the season to, to hopefully continue advancing, you know, in the eyes of the league. Well, the one thing that I do try to do, uh, me, myself personally, is not get too overhyped over somebody especially during preseason, the Indianapolis Colts and its fans have had that whole situation, you know, last year with uh, Darius Fountain um, absolutely blew up, right? But he kept getting hurt. Uh, the year before that, you know, Deion Kane, right? You, you had the Deion Kane situation where he was supposed to be the next great guy. Deron Carter, remember that? Remember Chris Mom's Carter's great. boy? Yeah, I mean, Moncrief, we have these guys. Well, Moncrief was a higher, you know, end pick. He was supposed to be something, you know. These yeah. guys are, you know, your lower end picks, you know, your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round picks that seem to shine in preseason and then disappear during the regular season. Now, will that happen with Strawn? I don't know. 
Um, one thing that we are, we got to remember, Strawn played against second stringers and third stringers in uh, this past Sunday's game. They didn't play their starters. Guess what? Strawn is going to be playing with the starters this Saturday against the Minnesota Vikings. So we're going to get a little bit better look at that. Now, it won't be Easton throwing him the football, though. Right? It's going to be Sam Ellinger with the ones this Saturday. So that's going to be a little bit interesting. Um, but... I don't know, man. Uh, I, I, I want to see it. I want to I want to see what happens. I'm rooting for him. Uh, he's a great personality, great, great character. Um, I thought in the interview that he was just a, a, a very nice all-around guy. And I, I, I hope he makes it. And I, I, I think he's going to make the team. I think he's going to make the 53. But do you really think that, I mean, Yes, he showed the ability, but is he going to end up being the steal of the draft, right? As some people are, are talking about, you know, could he end up being that big time wide receiver right out the gate as a rookie coming out of a D2 school, do you think? I I don't think so, just because of the way the Colts run their organization, Okay. I think that they're going to ease him into this role. I don't, you know, you sit there and you talk about not getting overhyped, and I'm, I, you know me, I totally subscribe to that mentality. But I will say, you know, yes, he didn't play yes or Sunday against the, the ones, but he did Thursday and Friday. You know, during practice, he got a lot of run with the one. And we've seen multiple times where he was, he was showing that he could handle the pressure. You know what I mean? And like you said, I don't, know that he will be considered the steal of the draft, maybe the surprise of the draft, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of other kids out there that, you, you know, you that get drafted in different situations like the Dio Dangos. You know, everybody thought he'd be a first rounder, but then we got him, you know, so how do you weigh that as far as being, quote, the steal of the draft? But most important for me is, like I said, this kid is stacking days on top of days. He's getting better day in and day out. And that excites me more than seeing him flash on a play or two. I mean, just the fact that you can sit there and physically watch. Tomorrow I'm going to go out and watch him, hopefully, and, and I hope to get to see a lot of things that I didn't see week one, you know, during all of our visits to tra training camp. So, yeah, I, like I said, I think this young man is going to be have the opportunity, and I think he's maximized that. But the Colts aren't going to sit there and throw him in the deep end unless – you know, we have some injuries or something, but I can see them trying to sprinkle him in a little bit like they did with Paris, like they hoped to and did with Paris Campbell in his first year, you know, sprinkle in a, a couple design plays and stuff and then, you know, just build from there. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I, I root for the kid, but there are times, I mean, he still has those drop issues from time to time, like today. Apparently, um, you know, Sam Ellinger had the majority of the snaps and did not look very good with the first team, right? Uh, apparently, with the first team, Eason was 4-4, four four, right? Uh, with the first team snaps. Uh, completed all of his stuff. And then when he's playing second team, Strawn was there, and he threw him perfect ball, apparently, deep down the field. And he dropped it, you mm -hmm. know? Hit him perfectly, like, but he dropped it. And that's happened a few times in practice that we've seen. But those drops are a lot less now than what they were earlier in the season. Thank you, Fuzzy Whistler, for the donation. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But right now I want to end uh, this stream here on <laughs> news break. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this stream. All right. Give us a follow so that you're notified when we go live. And go check us out on YouTube. Have a good one. All right, that was my recording. And now I can get into Fuzzy Fuzzy Whistler's uh, <laughs> donation. Appreciate that, my guy. Very big time. So he says, I uh, hope you feel better, my guy. Go horse. Yeah, I, you know, I could read that in a different way. I hope you feel better. <laughs> go horse. 
<laughs> not that type of sickness thank goodness oh, okay okay <laughs> <laughs> no nah, man i get what you're saying i really appreciate the donation and absolutely go horse man go colts i i really hope you know what that's another thing that we we have to remember you know I, i'm not a subscriber of winning in preseason helps you win during the regular season at all but if you're winning because you know, individual personnel seems to be doing their job properly, then that's great, you know. And it's not like one guy or two guys was just dominating early on, right? Uh, you were seeing plays being made by all sorts of people out there on the court. Even Benny LeMay, you know, who, you know, helped carry guys 10 yards down the field then got flagged. Uh, I'm not going to discuss that right now. Maybe later, but not right now. Uh, <laughs> if only Lawrence was healthy as a horse, right, Alpha? I, I completely agree with you on that one, my guy. Anthony Hurt, what's up? Master Blaster, Martin Hazel, KDC City. We got people just rolling on in here. Appreciate each and every one of you. Please don't forget to smash that like button. Um, so, now that we had that discussion earlier... KDC City says uh, Moncrief, uh, Lavon Brazil, Chester Rogers, Deion Kane, Reese Fountain. So many wide receivers we had high hopes for that just did not seem to work out. And that's that's what I'm saying, you know. And we know that. But, you know, uh, I like where Strawn's going. And the thing about Strawn is he did not look good earlier in the training camp. And earlier in training camp, I didn't think he was going to make the team. Because he was dropping three quarters of anything that was thrown at him. He was having problems getting open. Stuff like that. And then, like Loyalist is saying, he just continually, gradually getting better. You know, taking in that coaching. Listening to what people are saying. And, and doing everything he can to improve himself. And, you know, he said in my interview, I asked him. You know, uh, you can go back and check the interview if you want. Uh, it's, it's on my channel. Uh, I asked him, it was the last question of the night, because I asked him the very first question, I asked him the very last question. That's kind of cool, isn't it? But the last yeah. question was, you know, what do you prefer to work on the most? Your strengths to make them even better? Or your weaknesses, you know, to try to kind of even you out a little bit? And he's like, you know, I, I work on both equally. I got to make my strengths even better because that's what I'm going to be making my money on. But I got to work on my weaknesses as well so that people can't, you know, shoehorn me into that situation. So, yeah, uh, I, I like the kid. I like where his mind's at. And I'm glad he's taking coaching very, very well. Will he be, uh, like I said, the breakout player of the year, seventh round pick, being a pro bowler or something? I doubt it. Like you said, Loyalist, the Colts are not one of those teams that go – over and over and over to a certain player, right? In, in, in the passing game, in the running game, you, you always see it. They like to spread the ball around. Does that mean that, you know, he might not end up getting a lot of a lot of targets because he just happens to be open? You know, he could have three guys standing around him and be open because, you know, these guys are down here and he's up here. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's possible, but... I want to see what he's going to do uh, against the ones. Um, uh, I know Ellinger's pass. I, I'm, I'm going to guess that Eason will probably get more against the Lions than what Ellinger will. Um, but then again, of course, we've we got to talk about Wentz too. You know, Wentz, they're, they're already talking about him getting ready to go out and do walkthroughs and stuff like that. So that's good news. Um, you know. Maybe maybe we end up seeing Wentz, you know, uh, week one. So it'll be very interesting. But the problem, as a matter of fact, Jalen Williams just said something about that at update update on, on, on Carson playing week one. I mean, it's possible. It's po I've said that from the get-go. It's possible, you know, especially right after the surgery, like, a, what, five days later, he's walking around the field with no not even a boot on, no limp, no nothing, you know? I mean, come on. Uh but with Strong, it's an uphill battle because we have a lot of good receivers. You know, Zach Pascal is a very, very consistent receiver. T.Y. Hilton is a guy that 
quarterbacks just trust to throw the football to. Michael Pittman is an up-and-comer. Paris Campbell, at times, can be uncoverable on the field, you know. Uh, we've got receivers out there, and it's going to take, he's going to have to find his niche, or niche, or whatever, however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's pronounced both ways. <laughs> uh, and, and and write it, you know, and gain that confidence in, in, in training camp and preseason with these quarterbacks. But the big thing, you know, that I know you use that some of these receivers and stuff that from the past, but to me, the consistency that he has put out on there day in and day out. I mean, yes, we've seen a little bit from Deion Kane, or you might have seen uh, two or three practices, but then all of a sudden things faltered. Or Darius Fountain, you know, where I just feel like something about watching him, and maybe it's just because I'm paying closer attention this year than I have in years past, but to me it just seems like he's really, really getting much more of his foot in the door than any of these other kids. The big thing I would like to see him work on is his blocking down the field. You know, I mean, Strawn is, I mean, he doesn't have that that frame that, you know, I mean, is going to be able to, to uh, you know, bully people around. But he's got this frame that if he can just learn to position himself properly and, and be serviceable, you know, because that's a big part of the Colts game. You know what I mean? That's why Chester Rock, or darn it, that's why Zach Pascal. You know, I mean, that's why everybody's so hyped about what Pittman's been doing this year. I mean, this is an important piece to being a receiver that that for me, I would like to see him work on that, you know, the most. I mean, I know it doesn't affect him as far as catching the ball and stuff. But like you said, he's going to be the number five guy or the number six guy. OK, however you want to label it. And the thing is, is he's going to be in the locker room, you know, if he makes a 50 He's going to be in there day in and day out. He's going to be getting these practices. And I think that that is where we're going to find him finding that consistency. And, and you know, more reps, less drops. More reps, more time to hone, hone his craft, you know. I just really think that I can see the Colts, like I said, sprinkling a few plays in. But then if there's an injury or something, I don't think they're going to be nearly as hesitant as they were to put a, a, a Darius Fountain or a Deion Kane in there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that Strong has shown enough during camp that, you know, if there was an injury or a reason to elevate him up the roster, you know, that he's not, it's not going to be something that he's not going to be prepared for because of, like I said, everything we've discussed over the last, you know, 15 minutes, the kid just seems like he's really on the right path. And that's all you can ask for from a rookie seventh round draft pick as far as I'm concerned. So anything that we get above this, it's just all, like you said, it's all just bonus, you know, and I, and I hope he's looking at it as the same. Aaron Stackhouse. Oh, you should totally discuss that now. What a bunch of BS. Now, what's, uh, highlight that, Aaron. Uh, my guy, you're, I see you. I mean, you're one of my OGs that's been in here. So l- let me know what, what exactly you mean. Is, is it because we're talking about Strong now and that you had discussed it in the past, but we didn't wouldn't discuss it? Uh, either way, man, I just, you know, I, I want to know more about what you were saying in there. Uh, when it comes to Strawn and and uh, run blocking, heck, heck with Pat, heck, 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 blah, blah, blah. one of these days I will learn how to speak English. The heck with blocking downfield. I'm talking about run blocking like Zach Pascal and, and, and Pittman. That's a, that's a situation that will help him. If he can, if he can get that up going, he's a big dude, yeah, big dude. And if he's able to to be able to block out wide receivers or block out cornerbacks for wide receiver screens, or you know stretch plays or something like that, that would help him get more field time. And the yeah. more you're on the field, the more opportunities you have to show yourself. That's how. That's one of the reasons why Zach Pascal gets so many snaps. It's because he's great at blocking too, you know. That's, that's the guy I would love for him to get so much time with is Pascal, because Pascal not only can teach him how to do the block, but he can teach, you know, Michael how, you know, this is what I did. This was my path to make myself important to this team. You know what I mean? And I think that if if you learn that, like I mean, Coach Sirianni said last year, you know, <laughs> he wanted, you know, you wanted your son to be like Zach Pascal. 
You know, if you can sit there and get a guy that has that much of the Colts nature culture in him and stuff and learn from him, that's the guy that you need to be, you know, like I said, in, in the hip pocket, of, you know, yeah, I understand the route running and stuff, but if you can figure out how to make yourself valuable, your rookie year and, and get that playing time and get those reps. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Year two, year three of your career. That's when you get a chance to really explode on the scene. KDC city says, I hear that Fisher is ahead of schedule. Honestly, he's right on schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, back when we, uh, picked him up right after the draft, the Kansas city Chiefs said that they expected him to be ready to come back and start practicing in training camp about mid August. Cause they were going to resign him. And then the Colts swept in and got him. And the Colts were saying early September, you know, is what their doctors had him scheduled for. And I reported that and no one wants to listen to me. And then all of training camp, I said, he looks like he's getting ready. You know, he's out there doing hard uh, starts and stops on his injured left heel foot, right? Uh, out there doing sprints, starting hard, stopping hard on that left foot. And, you know, he's, he's, he's just out there doing it. It looked like to me that he should be uh, getting ready not to do team drills, but to throw some pads on, go out there and do individual work, you know. Uh, take that next step. And from what I'm understanding, that's where he's at. He's getting ready to start doing that, man. Uh, so that's that's a big-time thought. Um, what are your thoughts on Fisher? Yeah, I, I I could just double down, but, you know, well, that's exactly right. Like you said, this is sort of the line of thinking, you know what I mean? Because I came into this with the old way of thinking that Achilles was, you know, basically a two-year recovery. You know, I mean, the first year, yeah, they get on the field, but they never seem to be 100%. Sort of like Robert Mathis was when he went through his Achilles and stuff. You know what I mean? How many so- surgeries did he end up having? Just cleaning it up and, and trying to get him more mobility out of it. But nowadays, you don't really hear a lot about that because, of, the, like you said, this new technique. And, and just with the way that the medical profession in the sports medicine has gotten in front of these things, I think that. Yes, it's still something to be concerned about. Is there a guarantee that Fisher's going to come back 100%? No. But honestly, I mean, if we can get him back week two, week three, and he's coming back, you know, 80% of what he's got, you know, what he was last year, I think, I think I'd think i still take that over what we've, what we've been seeing over the last few weeks. Amen to that. Can I get a hallelujah? Um, <laughs> all right. So thanks, Martin Hazel, for the $5 donation. Guys, uh, Fuzzy Whistler and Martin are at the, up here right now using the Streamlabs donation that you have seen right here. Uh, and it will stay for streams on end. You know, if you go over there and look right there on, on my screen, you can see the, the donations. Uh, appreciate you, my guy. He says uh, they see him as an end zone target. His size and ability to win when heavily covered appears to be evident every time it happens. And, and I agree. And I don't yeah. think it's just an end zone thing. I, I think, think it may have started off that way. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But, yeah, I agree. I think that their eyes are being opened probably just as much as ours, you know. I mean, Ballard and his team obviously seen something, but I I can't imagine with the fact that they waited to pick him up in the seventh round. I can't imagine that they expected all that they're getting from him, you know, and can't. Oh, okay. Aaron says, sorry, he was talking about the celebration penalty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring Uh-oh. it up now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, dude, that is, I, do, I don't agree with that penalty. I don't agree with it at all. At least that I get, you know, like getting in someone's face, like hardcore and, uh, you know, uh, like in the Super Bowl, right? When the corner walked up and did the peace sign to, uh, uh, Hill, Tyreek Hill. Hill. Yeah. 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 Remember that, that I believe you know, yeah, that's that's a personal one-on-one thing. This is what happened on Sunday. What happened on Sunday was a guy who made a heck of a play against multiple people in a preseason game. And he's like the fifth string running back. 
and he makes a highlight reel play. He's just excited. That's all he was doing. And he gets flagged, you know, and 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 slapped with a 15-yard penalty. And if he happens to do it again, you know, he's out of the game. You noticed after that, nothing he did. He didn't celebrate or nothing. He looked like a robot out there. And was- not to mention, this kid sits there and puts out this amazing play for, you know, for film and stuff. But all the coverage is is just about how he got the penalty and how this mm-hmm. new rule. I mean, they're not even acknowledging what this kid did. I mean. Yeah, it's 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 just ridiculous. <laughs> well, I mean, when you talk about the guys who are against what that call was, they talk about it and they say, "Look what this kid did." We know this kid's name because of the penalty, but look what he did, right? And absolutely, man, this Pat McAfee made a great speech about it. Yes, he did. Yeah, he absolutely did. Absolutely did. He absolute. It was like a 15 minute speech. I know, I was there. Spring Hill Jack, what's up? Now here, uh, he thinks that Strawn will end up being number three, and it's gonna knock knock our boy down. Uh, well, my guy, uh, Paris Campbell down to five, and I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, Paris Campbell is just like I said earlier. There's times when the man is just absolutely uncoverable, and he's scary downfield. You've seen. One play, but if you go look at the tape and watch the game, rewatch it, Paris Campbell was nearly open on every single play. It's just whether or not the quarterback had time to get him the football or not, or where he was at during his read progressions, things like that. Paris Campbell is nasty, and you get a, a quarterback with a decent offensive line with enough time, like at least two or three seconds. You're going to see Paris Campbell get a lot of catches. I'm telling you. Um, but yeah. And he's, he. I mean, Strong, I'm not trying to take away from what he's doing, guys, but he's doing plays that we're like, oh, hey, that's pretty good for a seventh-round draft pick. Okay? Paris Campbell is like, oh, that was really good for an NFL wide receiver. You know what I mean? Everybody sort of has that disclaimer for Strong because of his – you know, youth, basically, because of his lack of experience. Paris Campbell, I mean, he doesn't have a lot more experience than than uh, Strawn as far as game time. But the like you said, the route running, the precise, you know, being exactly where the quarterback expects him to be, being able to catch the ball and then just turn it into something that's, you know, you're like, oh, you're like, oh, there's a nice eight, nine-yard catch that gets turned into a 40, 50-yard touchdown. So, I, I mean, <laughs> that's where we're like, hey, guys, let's slow down for just a minute, okay? Strawn is doing awesome and very hyped about what he's doing. But, no, to sit there and think that he's going to replace a T.Y. or or even a Zach Pass, there, I mean, there's just – these guys offer too much in the way of experience, too much in the way of being well-rounded, I think, to be able to be replaced by Strawn this year. This now, year, yeah. Good. Yes. Let's see yeah, what happens year. this year. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that that's the thing, you know, it's it's you know, it's like, oh, you, you get so stoked seeing this big kid and like you said and the whole situation and we all have this image of Brady being drafted late in the draft and and, and then becoming what he was, you know. But let's just <laughs> let's let him play a year in the league. Let's let him get some some reps out there with like you said some of the uh, top tougher level competition that, you know, he hasn't quite seen yet. All right, so thank you, KDC City, with a three-dub uh, dropped in the donation pot again. Uh, now, Loyalists don't see these un- unless he's watching on the stream on YouTube, um, but they're, they're not right here. Uh, but he says, I can't wait to see Quiddy out there this Saturday. What are you looking forward this weekend? Well, I'm right there oh. with you, my guy. Mm-hmm. I want to see Quiddy against the ones. I want to see I want to see him. I want to see Ture. I want to see both those guys against the ones uh, this weekend. On either side, I want to see them get pressure. I don't necessarily need to see eight sacks, all right? But I want to see a minimum of eight pressures while they're out there, okay? I want to see them force the quarterback to uh, hurry up and, and, and do stuff, you know, make him uncomfortable. That's what I need to see. What, what do you what do you excuse me, what are you thinking, Loyalist? <laughs> I want to see these guys so much that I darn near killed myself trying to get everything situated so I can go see them just tomorrow. 
I'm like, man, I can't wait till Saturday. So, I mean, I really, you know, like you said, I want to see, I just want to, you know, see, is Quiddy really, is he, is, where is he in relationship to where he was last week, you know, before the injury? Because quite honestly, last week before the injury, Quiddy was looking very dynamic. Quiddy was looking explosive, you know what I mean? And then to sit there and just see these guys again back out on the field with the Grover and DeForest, you know what I mean? And, and let's just see how these guys are are growing together and stuff and, and see what type of strategies that Blues can bring up and, and, you know, and dial up for putting pressure on these quarterbacks. Like I said, that for me, I'm, I feel like I've seen enough from the offensive side. I mean, yes, I still want to see more consistency and stuff from the offensive side, but right now my big, my big excitement is generated through the defense, which is saying something, seeing how I'm more of an offensive side minded type of person. But yeah, just want to see these guys out there and see them, like you said, running with the ones, see if Quiddy is getting, you know, absorbed in blocks or is he, you know, getting loose, see if Quiddy's setting the edge, you know, just, it, you know, where does he stand? You know, and we'll get to see a lot of that Saturday. But yeah, like I said, I'm so stoked to see these guys. I, I, Thursday, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> Master Blaster in the chat says, if anyone should flex during that one play, it should have been the old lineman. They pushed that running back and pile of players all that way. I'm not going to disagree with you, but Benny LeMay ran up the gut, took a hit by three different guys, took on that safety, ran into that safety, did not go down. The guy had him around his head in a headlock, basically. And uh, he was just still churning with his feet backwards, backwards, you know, staying up. And because he was able to stay up and still turn his feet backwards, that the, that allowed the O-linemen to come in and help push the pile. So yes, I agree with you that the O-linemen do deserve credit uh, for a lot of that run, but had Benny not done what he had done, that opportunity wouldn't have been there. So I'm going to give the credit to Benny LeMay. Yeah. Cause like you said, he kept them feet churning and, and he, he never really came to a complete stop. He kept his momentum. It wasn't like, you know, everybody, everybody came to a mosh pit and then the, the line came in and gave him that extra surge. I mean, he, he was moving the pile even, you know, as the line was chipping in. Mm-hmm. What's kicking 40 in the chat mean? I am confused, Anthony. Either way. <laughs> um Let's see. I'm 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 looking around on here. I see a bunch of people talking. Uh, says that uh, when it comes to the tiebreakers, uh, oh yeah, someone I don't remember exactly who it was, and I'm sorry because I'm not seeing. I'm, I'm overlooking it in the chat somewhere. They think that Mike Strawn put a fire under Des Patman's butt this Sunday with the way he's been playing, and Des Patman was honestly quiet almost all training camp. And then on Sunday, lit it up, right? Lit it up. Oh, 40 viewers. Thanks. I appreciate that. That's what it means. <laughs> 40 viewers. Yes, I agree, man. Um, I, I think that uh, the way, it's not just Strawn, all the receivers. Everybody was getting in on the action out there playing their butts off. And Des Patman finally was able to get out there and show, you know what? Don't forget about me. Don't forget about me. And he had the most catches on the day, right? Five of them. And didn't have all the drops that certain other players had, like like Patman had, like Kylan Granson had, right? That's that's something that you have to remember. I mean, it's not just Mike Strawn that's having, you know, hands issues, you know. Um, you know, Granson's having a little bit of dropsies as well. That <laughs> that pass, that beautiful pass from Easton to Granson. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he caught it and he turned and then the guy wrapped him up and knocked the ball out, right? And then they thought that, you know, then the whole fumble return controversy thing happened. He caught a ball today. Nice pass. Turned up field. Both arms wrapped around that football, buddy. Both mm-hmm. arms wrapped around that football. I got another donation. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, thank you guys, man. This is freaking awesome. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, guys, love y'all. Brandon with a three dub. I really want to get your opinion on this take. Um, 
give me a second while I extend this because you have a very long quote in here. Holy cow, I don't know if I'm be able to read it all. There we are. All right. I want to get your opinion on this take. With Mike Strawn's popularity in the media and the pressure put on Granson as well, is some of the Colts nation spoiled by Ballard's drafting ability late in the rounds? I don't know if it's spoiled. I think it's necessary with the way he's chosen to build this team. So I hope that we're not just, you know, catching a nice little wave, which has been a gorgeous, awesome wave. But you know what I mean? He, this is this is exactly how he told us when he first came. This is how he's going to build the team. You know, we're going to we're going to draft good. We're going to teach him up the way we want him, the Colts way and stuff. So are we spoiled? Maybe. But I mean, quite honestly, if <laughs> if we weren't, this team wouldn't be looking nearly as dynamic as they do now. Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's definitely for sure. Like like you said, I mean, there's going to be guys that are not going to make, that's not going to be on this roster next year that, you know, a lot of us love, right? I mean, we may not have Pascal. I love Pascal. You know, we may not have Hines. I love Hines. Uh, or, or Mac, right? Um, we may not have some of these guys out there, you know, um, that we just, I mean, the problem is, is the way that Ballard is building the roster, it seems, is he's paying big money to big players. He's getting specifically huge, big-time playmakers and giving them the big money. And then, of course, the offensive line gets the money as well because you, you, there's no, a more important position, I think, in the, in, in the whole game. Um, but the fact that, you know, when you pay those guys – that means you have you're going to have a lot of a lot of turnover, you know, year after year after year of yeah. guys the middlings. But what's that's going? What is that going to do? That's going to get him uh, more compens com- compensatory. It's so hard for me to say that word, but you know what I'm saying. Where you're going to get a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh round pick for losing a guy, and he ends up signing big money at another n- another uh, team. And then he's going to use that and just roll that over, keep keep the team generally young and on rookie contracts. So We had an episode that you guys can go and look through where we had uh, Max Dean from Pan Am Football, and he, he prepared us for it. You know what I mean? It's like I remember asking him, do you think Naheem Hines will get, you know, re-signed and stuff, you know? And I was fully expecting him to say, yeah, because of the type of running back you want. You know what I mean? But these are these are the tough decisions that Ballard's going to be, you know, and you say it next year. I think he's going to have to answer some of those this year as far as with cuts and stuff, you know, as far as not having some of these guys that were pretty jazzed about, you know, whether it's the Patmans or, or what, you know what I mean? I think that we're, maybe not next Tuesday when they go to, from 85 to 80, but I'll tell you right now that that cut from eighty to fifty three, that's I mean that's going to be a tough one for Colts fans to watch because we've seen a lot of good stuff from a lot of young, especially in the receivers. I mean, a lot of these young receivers have put a lot of good film on there. You know, I mean they, and like you said, they've taken this energy and stuff to to realize that hey, I may not make it here, but I can make it somewhere else as long as I keep working my butt off. You know, so. Like I said, I think that we're going to find ourselves in those tough waters, but for the good, I think the team, overall team, is going to improve, hopefully year after year. Uh, completely agree. I want to go ahead and, and um, first off, uh, Mr. J567 with a $10 dub in the donation jar, and I'm going to get to that in just a second, but uh, before I forget, Master Blaster asks a really good question. Will we get any compensatory picks for Anthony Walker? Not sure. Yes, we will. Okay, so how these picks turn out is how much playing time they get on the other team. Okay, that's generally why quarterbacks who end up being starters and goes to a different team, you end up getting 
Tom Brady was a third round pick. Not because of his, you know, how much he made, but because he played the entire season in every snap, right? So that's a third round pick. Anthony Walker is going to play a lot of snaps for the Browns because he's going to be their starting Mike, which means the Colts will get a really good pick as long as he stays healthy. The Colts are going to get a good fourth, fifth round pick probably out of him. So just let you know that. Now, back to uh, Mr. J567. Again, $10. Holy crap, you guys are so awesome. You're just dropping money in the, in the donation jar left and right. And I need to get to this question. Do you think Ash Doolin should get a roster spot for his special team's presence? Or should the Colts go for a stronger receiver presence in guys like Strawn, Patman, Vaughns, guys like that? That's a that's a really, really good, good question. Special teams are so important. And I've put a lot of thought into this. I mean, I really have, because that is that's probably the one thing that I've been turning, you know, turning through my brain and stuff. By the way, guys, thanks for the donations. Uh I don't know if you can tell Lawrence is feeling better. Just energy, the the chat, all this just makes makes things better, guys. So I appreciate it. But as far as Julian goes, I think that you think about it, guys. You're number six wide receiver. I mean, we're sitting here, we're talking about Strawn. Okay, if he's the number five wide receiver, he may not get very many plays as long as everybody stays healthy throughout the year. So Obviously, the number six wide receiver, I mean, is going to have even less opportunities on the field. So, which, for me, the six wide receiver has to be able to play special teams because right there alone, he, I mean, he's got to have some value to the team. Okay, not just in a security blanket because, I mean, you've got practice squad for security blankets. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if you've got a guy who can sit there and perform exceptional as a gunner, you know what I mean, as Doolin does. You know what I mean? The, that is going to hold more value to the Colts this year than it would as having another number six wide receiver who may not ever see the field as a wide receiver. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. Mingo, what's up, my uh, Marion, Indiana compadre? All right. That's another guy who lives in my city, man, sitting in here chilling. Uh, appreciate you being in here. Look. At least I, if I remember correctly, that's that's what it is. Uh, anyhow, um, I want to talk. Uh, they're, they're sitting here discussing uh, other stuff. See, honestly, I agree. I mean, the, the special teams is important. But have you seen the death chart? Have you seen the returner? Marlon Mack is a return man. Marlon Mack and Ashton Doolin are the kick returners. That's kind of weird. And yes, I get that you want to be able to keep an extra guy like Patman, like Vaughn's, someone like that that showed up during uh, camp, obviously strong so far. But let's say you keep seven guys at wide receiver. Who are you letting go? Right? Are you letting Jordan Wilkins walk? Right? Hmm? Are you going to go a little bit less on the offense? Are you going to, you going to uh, hold down eight or nine offensive linemen, especially with the unknowns going on there? Doubt it. Defensive line, are you going to cut down the nine on that when you don't know for sure? Doubt it because you love the, you know, defensive line's all about, you know, flipping guys in and out throughout a game, keeping them fresh. You need as many people as you can on that D-line. It's very difficult to find a spot as much as you like. I think Vaughn's, you know, and some of these other guys, they might will probably be able to slide into that practice squad. Certain guys won't be able to, right? Mm -hmm. Certain little strong, he's not going to make the practice squad. He could suck the next two games, but he's shown enough, I think, that another team will give him a shot. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> Micaiah Bowman, Paris can return kicks. Oh yeah, he can. He did so in, 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 uh, his rookie season. He did so, uh, for Ohio state. But, uh, do you really want to put that much pressure on a guy who's had a little bit of problems 
with, you know, happen to get injured on returning kicks. Because these guys are coming in at 150 miles an hour on both sides. I, I'd rather just have him be the wide receiver and uh, take a less chance of him getting hurt in that aspect. But Where's Isaiah Rogers in the return game? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's well, a good I mean, question too. <laughs> you know, I I thought he did real well, and, and he was basically the only shining moment of that Cleveland game, you know, was that that – kick return that he had i mean i just don't understand i mean does that mean that he has lost his value in the special teams because i didn't even see him on the depth chart was he for the for the kick return yes oh he was okay yeah i was just going by the starters because you have two starters a kick returner you know so Mm -hmm. only one for the punt returner and that was naheem hines and after this year who's going to be the punt returner if we don't keep naheem hines don't know yeah you know, yeah i think so i i, I think we I, I don't know. i feel like if we lose heinz that we lose a little bit of our dynamic versatility you know and i hope that we find a way to make that you know with the powers of b and and naheem and his team i hope they can work it out yeah i mean i they're, they're bringing up that uh marlon mack was injured last year too and i'm not talking about injured last year i'm talking about since he's been in the nfl marlon mack in 2019 was a pretty darn healthy running back right and then 2020 just had that bad look his rookie season he had three or four times where he missed a game you know uh he had a broken hand one game came back uh a, a week and a half later you know and played uh with a broken hand and and played really really good with a broken hand. Um, but he's not... Running backs will get injured. They're, you're, you're used to seeing... Because I mean, they're running through a pile of 12 guys that are 300 freaking pounds, right? So, and they're not 300 pound guys. <laughs> but um, uh, Paris, on the other hand, he hasn't played a whole lot in the two years that he's been in the NFL. You know, I think he's played five games. So, six games. So, it's, it's, it's a little bit worrisome. And I, I would give him a, just a little bit more uh, kind of cushion when it comes to that, that, that aspect of the, uh, of the game. Do you think that this is something with the Marlon Mack? Do you think that's just something that they're trying to do to, you know, help Marlon open up his, avail- his value to some of these other teams? Because like you said, we don't know if he'll be with us next year or not. Marlon returned kicks when he was a rookie. Marlon's right. a good kicker because of his patience, right? And the ability to set up blocks in front of him. So kick returning is actually a, a, a big thing for uh, for Marlon Mack. He, he could make big plays. Um, but, yeah, it's, it, you might have a slight point there where, you know, Marlon Mack might be on the kick return because, you know, just – you know, it's more of a nod to him. Here's some more play time, some more tape to put out for other teams, uh, because I, I don't see the Colts giving him six, seven million a year. You know, just like Naheem Hines, I don't see him giving him six. Uh, as much as I love Naheem Hines, I don't think they can afford it. You know, yeah. so you might be right there. You might be. He, that's probably dead on. Uh, pushing fifty viewers. What? Guys, please smash that like button, hit subscribe if you're not subscribed, tag that <laughs> notification bell. Please. Uh, last time I checked, I had 23 likes. What, what, what am I at now? Uh, let me look. Let me look. Two. Oh, no, 24. If I've had one. Oh, there's one. It just popped in there. All right. That's awesome. Guys, I am here darn near daily now, right? We're here darn near daily. Now, it's not always live. But we always do something, whether we do a live stream or whether we do an upload or something of that nature. There's always some kind of content that we're dropping out there. Don't forget to check us out on our other social media platforms, right? Like I said, Newsbreak. But that's just one. I'm over on Twitter, right? Um, Loyalist is on Twitter. Uh, so, Loyalist, tell them. Well, actually, description. You don't have to say nothing. There's a description right here. Big old list of stuff where you could find us, including Twitter, right? So uh, make sure you go give Loyalist and myself a follow on Twitter. Um, speaking of which, I got something brewing in the works right now. 
I got something yeah. brewing in the background. And I'm not even talking about my what you guys already know about, which is the new Believe in Colts podcast <laughs> and me having uh, a former Colts player be my co-host, which is already signed. I'm not talking about that. I got something brewing with all the Colts content creators. Other content creators, okay? Um, we're working... Uh, you watch McAfee? Uh-uh. Got something cooking. <laughs> I got something cooking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got all the uh, bunch of different Colts content creators uh, going to do uh, little short videos. I uh, gave them, you know, direction and stuff of what I wanted. And, you know, each of them's going to get two or three minutes. And then I'm going to end up putting it all together and then posting it out. So keep an eye on that in the next two weeks, okay? I'm expecting to get the video from them by the Saturday, and then I need a week probably to just kind of put it all together. But I think it's going to be really, really good. Um, I've been been thinking about this for a couple weeks now, and they all and when I asked, they were they all jumped on board so quick. Like I might even have loyalists to get in on this a little bit here, uh, just because I think it'd be great. Uh, Hurt says, I hope we don't trade Mac at any cost. I don't think Mac's going to be on the team next year. I don't know if it's about a trade. I'm more worried about Marlon Mack. Just, you know, I would rather Marlon, I, I would rather Marlon Mack hit free agency so that he has options rather than a trade. Uh, that's my own. Same with Jordan Wilkins. I get you want something out of him, and I understand that. But I would rather see Jordan Wilkins uh, play out the year and then hit free agency and then go somewhere and get like a like a get on a team that needs a another running back for a one two punch like Buffalo or something like that. I think that'd be great for them and great for him. So, you know, I want to see my other guys who I like succeed elsewhere if they cannot stay on the team that I support and love. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Now, wouldn't you agree that the Colts, I mean, obviously it's not in his contract that way or anything, but just with the amount of respect that they've shown Marlon Mack, wouldn't you agree that if a trade opportunity came up, they'd check with him first and say, what do you think? You know what I mean? And get get his opinion on it. You know, it, it's not like, you know, you're trying to get rid of a guy that, you know, doesn't hold any sway in the in the locker room. You know what I mean? Well, this is a business. and Right. I mean, they can do that, and if the offer's good enough, they probably wouldn't give him an option. They'd just be like, dude, you're gone. You know, someone gave us, <laughs> offered us a second-round pick for you. You're gone, dude. Yeah. Uh, but I'm letting you know up front that you're a New York Jet, you know. Um, but No, but because uh, <laughs> uh, I would. I'm sorry, I love Marlon Mack, but if, they, if, the, if the Jets offered me a second-round pick for Marlon Mack, he'd be over there in a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, no questions asked. They offer me a third round pick, he'd be gone. You know, because I know we won't be able to afford him. Love Marlon Mack, love him. But yes, I I think that they would talk to him uh, for reasonable offers. I think they would discuss with him. Now I can't I can't say they definitely would, but mm-hmm. with the way Chris Ballard and Frank Reich run this team, they seem to be very player friendly they they talk to the leaders in the locker room they discuss things i think that 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 is something that they would probably do you know i don't think that they would do something like that uh mj567 says mac could get us comp comp picks next year if he left at the end of the year absolutely absolutely yeah. especially if he could stay healthy this year and have and, and do a nice turnout you know because he's still young He's a young, good running back. Yeah, I mean, if we didn't have such an awesome running back, you know, I, I sort of think about, which I know the situation is different, but do you remember when we when we drafted Edron and, you know, we replaced Marshall Falk with Edron James type of situation? Okay. Yeah. I was like, I was so upset. You know what I mean? This is a little different because, you know, we already seen what JT looks like in the uniform and stuff. But, guys, I mean <laughs> – you know, it's it's. I just see that the replacement piece is so awesome, and 
you get those extra years at a cheaper value. I mean, yeah, I, I just, I mean, it stinks for him, but hopefully, like you said, the Colts will find something or they'll work out something that I think he plays next year for sure. Just like you said, not in the blue and white. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Well, guys, uh, it's been over an hour. I've had a blast talking with y'all. Um, had some donations in here. The chat's been flying. I appreciate each and all of you. Uh, uh, Loyola said he's going to go to camp tomorrow, right? Yep. Uh, yep, got my car all up and legal and ready to go again. <laughs> well, if I have time afterwards and he fills up to it, we might end up doing a Patreon-only stream. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen... If you want to join in and, and, and be part of that stream, be able to watch it live, you got to join Patreon, and it's five bucks a month. A lot of these guys that are in this chat right now are part of my Patreon. Link is in the description. Five bucks a month ain't jack, right? That's a that's a cup of coffee from Dunkin' or Starbucks. Or I, I had to put that in there because some people got mad at me and said Dunkin's better than Starbucks, and I'm not I'm not going to get into that <laughs> argument. Um, gotcha. But yeah. Uh, not only in these Patreon streams, not only can you get in and watch them and get in the chat, but you you also get a link to where if you want to join, like Truett was talking about, like uh, a lot of these guys in here um, were discussing earlier, I send you a link to join the video itself. Sit down, hang out, chill, talk. Um, Joe, uh, Martin, Martin has been in the last couple times. Tyler Rarden, what's up? Uh, what do y'all guys talk about with Michael Strawn? It's a pretty simple guy. Um, I appreciate you joining. You're, uh, we're getting ready to end it, but just, you know, uh, hit, hit the refresh button here in just a second. Cause we're about to end this and you'll be able to watch it back. Or you could just, there's a little live button down here and you just hit the, the, the draw bar there, you know, and go back to the beginning if you want. But yeah, we, we discussed Strawn at length. With a lot of people in chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With a lot of people in chat. Uh, but, yep, yep. All right, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out. And don't forget to share this stream to your favorite social media by using that little share button right underneath Loyalist there. Um, it'll copy paste the, the link to Clipboard and go to Twitter or Instagram or wherever it is. Facebook, I don't care. And uh, Colts forums, I don't care. You know, share it out. Help me get my name out. Uh, I think we have a, a blast. But tomorrow we will be discussing what Loyalist sees in camp tomorrow, Patreon only. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. Uh, that's Colts Loyalist. And as usual, have a good one. Just because a guy's a player is not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name.